Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Uh, once again, I apologize that this review is a little bit late. Um, for those who didn't know, I got caught up on some other videos recently, and I'm kind of trying to get caught up with everybody else. So I know <clears throat> Scream 6 came out on March 10th, and I'm not posting the review until now. So I apologize again that this review is a little bit late. Uh, but that is the film I'm reviewing for you guys today, is Scream 6. Uh, for the most part, I like the Scream franchise. I'm not a humongous fan of them, but um, I would say the first film in particular I really like. Scream 2 I like. Scream 3 and 4 I, I like, but they're kind of the most forgettable bunch of the franchise. Uh, Scream 5, the one from last year, I enjoyed. So I was kind of, you know, eagerly awaiting this one. I was kind of curious to see what they were going to do for a sixth film and with the whole New York setting that they were going with. So in this film, though, you guys, basically we follow Sam and her friends from the previous Scream movie. Um, they are living in New York now. Um, Jenna Ortega's character, I think, is even going to school there. Melissa Barrera's character from Scream 5 from, you know, 2022. Um, I believe she's working two jobs in New York somewhere, uh, has a boyfriend and all this other stuff. So basically a lot of those core characters that survived the previous Scream film moved to New York and are trying to establish a new life. But things kind of get uncomfortable for everybody when uh, news starts to arise that a new ghost face is in town. Uh, murders that are involving the ghost face costume are starting to happen again. And it is happening in New York City instead of Woodsboro this time. Um, Gail Weathers from the previous Scream films, I believe all of them up to this point, uh, played by Courtney Cox. Um, she is in New York basically covering a story, and obviously this is kind of the new big story for her with all the ghost face stuff happening. So over the course of this film, they have to figure out once again, you know, who's after them, who's, who wants to seek revenge. Um, are characters from previous films really back from the dead, as some of these murders are suggesting? And um, how can they possibly defeat another ghost face and, um, you know, basically rid their lives again of another ghost face in their lives? But overall, guys, I enjoyed this film. Um, like I said, I'm a casual Scream fan, so it's one of those things where as long as the film is good, as long as I care about the characters, uh, as long as, you know, the film is well made, for the most part, I'm probably going to enjoy the Scream film if it's, you know, well made and doesn't do anything too dumb and things like that. But for the most part, I enjoyed this movie. I think it's a good uh, overall solid sequel. Um, certain things about it I'm going to get into here my negatives that I think could have been better. Um, specifically some, some negatives in this franchise overall that are really kind of highlighted in its problems and the, the parts that don't work. But for the parts that do work, there's things about it that I do really like. So let's go over some positives first of what I really enjoyed about this movie. First and foremost, I like the New York setting in this movie. Um, it's just such a cool place to put a screen movie. You know, you have dark alleyways and dark subway trains and places where, you know, like the little corner stores that, you know, Ghostface could really cause some mayhem in. So I really like the whole New York setting. I think they kind of bring it to its full potential as far as what Ghostface can do, you know, with all the close range apartments that New York can sometimes have. Uh, they really kind of take advantage of that as well. So the New York setting really helps this movie. I think it's probably one of the better aspects of the film that makes it a little bit more original than some of the other Scream sequels. Uh, so the New York setting was a huge fan of it. Definitely one of the better parts of this movie. Uh, the character of Sam played by Marissa Barrera. Um, I really got into her character this time. I really felt invested in this dark past that's kind of always haunting her. Uh, for those who didn't see Scream 5, I won't go into too much detail as exactly who she is. But she is related to a previous Scream character of big significance. And um, you really get into kind of her dark past and how she's feeling and how she feels like she can't be normal with everybody else because of this dark past because there's so many people on social media that are picking up picking on her about this identity and about this connection that she has to this other person um i just really got into her character there's even scenes where um i think this guy that she's seeing she's basically saying you know i really can't be normal with everybody else because i'm this you know recognized person on the internet all they got to do is log into tiktok or twitter or any of those other places and i'm done for you know i'm, I'm that person that's forever haunted by the events of the, you know, the previous Scream movie and stuff like that. So I got into the character. I understood her trauma. She, was, she even tries to see a therapist at one point in the movie. Um, you just really feel for her. You really feel invested in her journey, and you really want her to be able to feel normal with everybody else and not have to worry about this dark past that she's associated with. Um, I do like that they went with a meaner ghost face this time around. Ghost face even gets a hold of a shotgun for those who've seen the trailer for this movie. There is a scene where he gets into a corner store and he gets a hold of a shotgun. It's, it's very creepy. 
seeing Ghostface handling a shotgun is absolutely very terrifying. So they definitely make Ghostface a little meaner this time. So that, that promise they made all this time ago when, when Scream 6 was going into production about Ghostface being a meaner character than usual this time, I think they succeed with that. Um, Ghostface with a shotgun is a very scary thing to witness. And for the most part, this film is consistently entertaining. Um, I never felt bored in this movie. The film always has a way of making you feel entertained and um, never feel bored of what's going on. There's always something happening in this movie that always keeps it going. So it's a very entertaining film. It consistently keeps uh, you invested in everything that's happening in the movie. So I can't complain about that. The film succeeds in being entertaining in that department. Um, there's also a ghost face shrine that's featured in the movie, once again featured in the trailer, so I really can't call it a spoiler because even the filmmakers of the film want you to know what it is based on things they've shown you in the trailer. Uh, the ghost face shrine I thought was very, very cool. Um, they definitely have a lot of things there in this shrine that are nods to earlier Scream movies and, you know, whether it's merchandise or drawings or things of significance in earlier Scream movies. Very, very cool to witness. The Ghostface Shrine was a very cool thing to see in this new Scream movie. For my negatives of the movie, though, um, there's a lot of characters that felt too invincible to me this time around. It's just one of those movies where, you know, people could get cut up and shot at, and there's just a lot of characters that go through, you know, really horrific injuries over the course of this movie, and they somehow survive. Um, so I thought there's one aspect, like I said, that kind of highlights one of the negatives of this franchise is I do feel like characters at this point can just kind of survive anything and that kind of takes all the stakes away. So I do hope that they make later screen movies. I hope they try to ground it in reality just a little bit more because this time around it did feel like all the characters were a little too invincible for their own good. It felt like they could get up and walk around it after any kind of injury that they sustain over the movie. Um... Characters felt a little too invincible to me this time around. I would have liked to have seen characters that were more vulnerable, and if they got hurt or stabbed or shot at, they definitely would have felt that if not got killed. Um, so there's, it just kind of felt like at times, too, that they were too afraid to kill off certain characters, even though there's monologues about, you know, legacy characters can die this time around, core characters can die this time around. Okay, well, live up to that. Make sure you're pursuing that rule then. Um, it just kind of felt like, Everybody was invincible this time around. We're going to let everybody live, and that's the end of that. Um, and overall, this did kind of feel like a money grab sequel to me. I always get a little suspicious when I hear about these one-year turnarounds because Scream 5 was only one year ago. Um, so don't get me wrong. I like me a good Scream film every once in a while, but I think this film, I kind of wish it could have came up maybe two or three years after Scream 5. At least give us that extra year of breathing room to take in the film and stuff like that. So it did have kind of a money grab sequel feeling to it. So if they do make a Scream 7, I hope they wait maybe another two or three or even four years. Um, they don't have to gotta wait 10 years like what they've done with some of the other previous sequels. But I think this is a little too early, too soon. Um, it did kind of feel like, oh, hey, I guess that Scream 5 movie made a lot of money. Let's quickly put another one into production here. Um, so... It just kind of felt like a money grab sequel to me. So hopefully if they do make another one, it's not just, oh, hey, free money for us. It's just, you know, have more reason for it besides, oh, it's making money. Let's make another one. Um, so I think there's a lot of things you could do. Um, there's even something suggested at the beginning of the movie. It's just like, okay, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of different. And then they don't go through with it. So it's just like, uh, I, hate, I hate when a, a sequel just gets greenlit for the sake of money, and I think Scream is, is such a well-done franchise up to this point where it doesn't have to just be about the money necessarily. Um, I know there's that whole issue with Nev Campbell that we're going to get into here in a second of she wanted to return because she thought her paycheck for this movie wasn't going to be good enough to, for her to return. Um, and so it's just like, if you're going to do another one of these, make sure you're going into it with just, oh, they're, we'll put them in New York this time. Just... I felt like there could have been more to it as to why they were pursuing the sequel than what they came up with. And overall, I won't get into details, obviously. I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler-free as I can for this review. But the reveal in this time around I thought was very weak. It just kind of felt like another typical Scream movie with people with weird motivations and dark motivations. And, oh, you're connected to this person and stuff like that. Um, the reveal was kind of weak to me. Um, not my favorite of the Scream reveals. So that aspect of the film, I can see why people aren't too happy with it because it is kind of a weak reveal when they get to that in the third act of the movie. 
And overall, I would like to see Nev Campbell back. Yeah, you know, they're getting people online like, oh, this film was perfectly fine without her. Scream's going to be perfectly fine without her. We need Sydney Prescott. I, I Now that I've seen a Scream film without Sydney Prescott, it does feel kind of weird that she's not in it, especially when people keep bringing her up over the course of this movie. Bring Nev Campbell back. Bring out the checkbook. Let, let's give her what she wants. Um, uh, you know, I think Nev Campbell likes playing this character as far as I know. But um, it's just kind of too bad that the studio that made this movie didn't give her the paycheck that she wanted. Um, I'd be really like to see Nev Campbell back in another screen movie if they do indeed make a seventh one. <clears throat> and overall, and this isn't Scream's fault. There's a lot of film franchises that do this, specifically horror films. Um, I hate when a film has a complete absence of the police. Like the police almost feel like they are like non-existent or they show up at the worst possible times. I'm not a fan of that. Scream 6 is definitely guilty of this crime. Um, there's just a lot of scenes where it's like, wouldn't somebody call the police when they saw something like that? Specifically when like they're in the apartment and they're climbing over to this other person's apartment through this ladder. It's just like, wouldn't somebody call the cops at this point with all that noise? And so it's just like... It didn't feel like it was very grounded in reality in that sense. It's just like I would have liked to have seen a story where it actually felt like police existed in this universe. So overall, I'm going to give Scream 6 an 8.5 out of 10. I really like this movie. There's definitely great things about it. The New York setting works great for a Scream movie. But like I said, characters felt a little too invincible this time around. It did kind of have like a money grab sequel feel to it. I, I would have liked to have seen more reasons for why they pursued Scream 6 out of just out of the money. Um, the reveal this time was a little weak. Um, I really want to see Nev Campbell back for a seventh film if they do decide to make another Scream movie. Um, we really need Sydney Prescott in this franchise. She really is kind of the core character of this sequel in this in this franchise overall. Um, and I just, I hate when a movie has an absence of police. Like, they just feel like they are, they're non-existent. But 8.5 out of 10 for me. Really like the movie. And um, I do recommend Scream 6, but do go into it knowing that it's not a perfect movie but it is a very good sequel to the Scream franchise.